I want to speak to you this morning about staying strong when God is silent. How many here this morning think it's, feel like it's a long time since you've heard from the Lord, since he's spoken to your heart? I know that there's many. Father, I thank you, God, with all my heart, Lord Jesus Christ, for how faithful you are. You are not a man who can lie. And when you speak, that's the truth. That's what happens. God Almighty, I pray that you encourage every heart that's here this morning, those that are listening online. God, encourage us. Give us courage for this hour in which we're living. I thank you for the anointing that takes us so far beyond our natural abilities. God, I pray, oh, Holy Spirit, give me the power to speak this. And Lord, take this word and cause it to rest in the hearts of your people. Lord Jesus Christ, lift us out of all the turmoil. Lift us, O oh God, out of all the struggles and trials and strivings and bring us into that glorious rest that you promise us in Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this, God. It will be the hallmark of your people in these last days. I bless you for it with all my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 89, please. Psalm 89. I want to speak about staying strong when God is silent. And everybody has those seasons in your life. If you haven't had one yet, hang on, you're going to have one. <laughs> this is what the, listen to the words of the psalmist beginning at verse 35 of Psalm 89. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven. Selah. Now these are the words, the psalmist is recounting the words from the mouth of God. God says, by my very character I swear to David that I'm going to do something through him. There's going to be a ruling and a reigning, such as this world has never seen. It will be established, and it will become a faithful witness. Verse 38, But thou hast cast off and abhorred, and thou hast been wroth with thine anointed. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. Thou hast broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries. Thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice. Thou hast also turned the edge of his sword and hast not made him to stand in the battle. Thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground. The days of his youth hast thou shortened. Thou hast covered him with shame. How long, Lord, will thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Lord, where are thy former loving kindnesses, which thou swearest unto David in thy truth? The psalmist is talking about a physical thing that he has viewed with his eyes. God has given this incredible promise and he remembers the beginning days of the reign of David, of King David, and the words that were spoken at that time, which David probably rehearsed before the people, for they seemed to have a knowledge of these words that were given to him. But now he's looking with his natural eyes, and it seems like every promise that was ever given to David has been taken away. And there are seasons and times in the lives of every one of us who believe in Jesus Christ, where it seems like all the promises that God has ever given us are dissipating. We, we were f so filled with faith. We so believed that moment that God spoke and said things like, I'm going to bring your family home to me. I I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to give you freedom. I'm going to use your life for my glory. And we were so filled with faith and so filled with hope. And now we look as the psalmist is looking, and listen to what he says 
in verses 35 to 37, he says, I remember when you first spoke your promises to me, how it seemed to be the joy of my heart, and it was the strength of my every day. <clears throat> says, you spoke to David words that cannot lie, and you, you told him that there was going to be an enduring rain come through his life, and it would be established as the heavens have been established. It would not be changed. Now, of course, the psalmist has no idea. He couldn't know the ways of God. He couldn't know that it was through the lineage of David that Jesus Christ was going to be born, and through Christ, the church of Jesus Christ was going to be born. He couldn't have known that we would be on this earth for a season of time as a witness to the mercy of God, established as the heavens are established. Then we would be drawn away from the earth where we would rule and reign with Christ for all of eternity. So these words are absolute truth. But you see, the problem is that humankind, you and I, we have a tendency to see just with what our natural eyes see. We have a tendency, as he looked around him and he saw, in a sense, the decay that was happening to natural Israel at this time. Verse 38, he says, now I feel my confidence at once where I felt I was reigning, now I'm barely surviving. But you've cast off and abhorred. You've been wroth with your anointed. You've made void the covenant of your servant. You've profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. You've broken down all his hedges. And the psalmist is saying, I thought I was going to reign. I thought we were a reigning people. But now look at what's happening to us. Verse 40 says, my sense of confidence and protection is gone. My strength and hope for tomorrow is in shambles. You've broken down all his hedges and you brought his strongholds to ruin. Oh God, I was so filled with faith when you first spoke to me. I remember coming to an altar in a church and I, I un opened this word and it was so alive. It was like God breathing into me and speaking to me about my future and what was going to happen through my life. And now, everything seems to be crumbling around me. I don't see the fulfillment of this promise that you made to me. All I see is that my protection seems to be gone, and the few things that I began to be able to build are crumbling underneath my feet. Verse 41, he says, all that pass by spoil him, and he's a reproach to his neighbors. I'm supposed to be a fragrance of Christ. I'm supposed to be a testimony of victory. Yet I can barely lift up my head in public. I go into the grocery store and I know I should be able to speak to the clerk, but I bow my head in shame because I'm experiencing so little victory in my own life. Oh God, where are your promises that you once spoke to me? And why? Why does it seem like everything is falling beneath my feet? Have I committed some kind of a, a sin that I'm not aware of in your sight that has caused you to withdraw your hand from me? Verse 42 to 45, he says, I'm, I'm losing the victory and I feel ashamed. You've set up the right hand of his adversaries. You've made his enemies to rejoice. You've turned the edge of his sword and you've not made him to stand in battle. And you've made his glory to cease and you've cast his throne down to the ground. Lord, the things I had the victory over seem to be coming back with a fury against me. I used to laugh at my enemies, and now my enemies are starting to laugh at me. I felt strong in battle, but now you've, it's like my sword has gotten dull, and I don't know how to yield it anymore, to wield it. I had a measure of the strength of God in my life that could not be denied, but it seems to be like sand just falling through my fingers. And you, it's, it's as if you've cast it all down to the ground. Verse 46, he says, how long, Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Remember how short my time is. Have you made all men for nothing or in vain? What man is he that lives and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Lord, where are your former loving kindnesses which you swore to David in your truth? In other words, he says, God, how long will you hide from me? Time is short. Where are your promises to me? Where are they? You know, the psalmist is dealing 
with a very, very real situation. He's looking at the actual physical decay of Israel and seeing the, what was supposed to be established as a praise of God in the earth, seemingly overthrown by powers of evil in that season that he's in. And his is a very real situation. Ours is often only a perceived ruin. It's something we begin to entertain in our minds. It isn't true, it isn't real. We perceive it to be so. And in this season, in these times when we go through these things, it's important that you and I learn to stay strong when we feel that God's voice has become silent. Now, if his voice is silent, there's, there are reasons for it. And I'm, not, I'm only gonna to touch on three of them. There are many reasons, but these are the three that God spoke to my heart. For example, there's an appointed time for what he has spoken to be fulfilled, as in the life of Joseph. God has already spoken to you, and there's no need for him to repeat himself. Thank God the book of Genesis doesn't say, and God said, let there be light. I said, let there be light. <laughs> God doesn't have to repeat himself. And there are workings in the heavens that we don't understand. God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. If, if you and I had been there and the darkness, if, if, we, had, if we had lived in that darkness, there was, a, there was a, an ever present darkness until the voice of God came. Just like you and I lived in darkness. Darkness was our abode, darkness was our eternity until God's voice through his son Jesus Christ came to you and said, let there be light. And when you believed in Christ and the cross of Jesus Christ cleansed you from all sin, light came into your soul. The, the, you, be, you became aware that God speaks and, and it's, if you and I had been there on that first day when he said, let there be light, we would be dancing and rejoicing from six in the morning to six in the evening. There'd be no end to the rejoicing. Then suddenly it starts to get dark and we would panic. Oh no, I knew it wouldn't last. I knew the light was going to go away. I knew that somehow there's something maybe we've done. Maybe it's the way we praised or didn't praise. Maybe we weren't in the word enough. Maybe there's something we should have been, some hedge we should have been trimming and we forgot to do it. And suddenly the light is going down and then we spend the next 12 hours in sorrow until the light comes up again. And we realize that when God said, let there be light, he didn't mean that there wouldn't be night. He didn't mean that there wouldn't be seasons where we don't see or don't understand. He didn't mean that we'd be able to see with our natural eyes everything that is going on in a heavenly realm all around us. You and I must resist the temptation to make something happen to prove to yourself and others that God is with you. Resist the temptation to try to make happen what God has spoken. He's going to do through your life. I've been there, folks. I got the dozen t-shirts at this place. I've tried to make things happen that God spoke into my life only to realize you can't make anything happen. Only God can make it happen. All we can do is hear his voice and hold to what he has spoken to us. If God said he's gonna bring your family home, he's gonna bring your family home, that's the end of it. That's the, that's the end of it. The rest is up to him. On my part and on your part is to believe him. If he said he's gonna use your life, he's going to use your life, but not on your timetable, on his timetable. Remember Joseph has given this incredible promise that he's going to reign and he's going to be a man through whom great provision is going to be given to others. But God doesn't tell him the whole story. He doesn't tell him there's gonna be betrayal and a pet and a potiphar and a prison along the way. Joseph doesn't see the whole journey. And sometimes I'm really thankful that God doesn't show us the whole journey. Because I don't know if we'd take it when we're young. Said, I'm gonna use your life. Oh, I'm gonna use your life for my glory. And we just, we're only one week in the Lord and God begins to speak. I'm gonna use your life. I'm gonna anoint you. But what we don't fully realize is that if he's gonna use you as a weapon for his glory, that a sword is not formed in a hammock, it is formed on an anvil. There is gonna be heat, there is gonna be hammering, there is gonna be bending, there's gonna be reshaping. It's gonna take time. And you and I are gonna cry out, God, I thought you said you were gonna use my life. And all you're doing is hammering me and heating me. Oh Jesus, help me, help me. The enemy has got a hold in my life. The enemy is destroying me. 
And the Lord says, no, I told you that I was going to use your life for my glory, but I'm not going to use you till you're ready. Folks, you don't give a child a chainsaw. They'll hurt himself with it. There's got to be growth. There's got to be wisdom. There's got to be skill. There's got to be instruction. There's got to be training. There's got to be sweat. There's got to be trial. You have to go through a season where you're the guy with the wheelbarrow taking the cut wood down and putting it on a pile before you get to use the chainsaw. I'm giving away my background as a Canadian. And <laughs> the prophet Habakkuk chapter two, verse three says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. If God has spoken something into your heart, assuming you're an honest believer in Jesus Christ, yes, you have frailties and failings like we all have. But every time God speaks, you get back up. You let his blood continuously cleanse you from all sin. You do want to glorify him in the earth. The things he has spoken to you will come to pass because that's the testimony of the people of God. I believed and God did something that could only be done by his hand and by his voice. The writer of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 to 37 says, cast not therefore away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise for yet a little while. And he that shall come will come and will not tarry. God has an appointed time to answer you. And usually, it's been my experience, is when you and I cannot answer it on our own. When we've tried everything we know, we've pulled every lever, we've written every card, we've, we've done everything we know to do, and it's hopeless. It's suddenly at that point that God appears and does what only he can do, that the testimony might be of him and not of ourselves. Sometimes the voice of God is silence because the answer is coming. Although it meets a form of resistance which neither you and I can understand. There are some battles in the heavenlies that we don't fully comprehend. For example, Daniel sought the Lord. Daniel set himself to seek God. An angel came to him in response. And in Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, here's what the angel said to him. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day you set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I have come for your words. Day one, a messenger was dispatched to answer the questions that were in the heart of Daniel. Now listen to verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Sometimes it's just a mystery. I don't understand this, and neither do you. And we're best not to try to figure these things out. Now there are people who claim to have an inside track to this. God bless them, I don't. Sometimes, the voice of God is hindered because there's a battle going on that we don't know anything about. Other times, the hindrance is inside of ourselves because we have let other voices into our hearts that are put there to resist the voice of God. It's so important, my brother, my sister, that you and I be careful what we are listening to and who we are listening to. Hang around with people of faith. Turn off. You've got to listen to the news once in a while. I understand that. But don't let it get into your spirit. Because you can end up with a war going on inside of you against the voice of God. God may be trying to speak, but all of the resistance. In Daniel's day, it was an exterior resistance to the answer of God. But in our day, it can be an interior resistance because we have access to so many voices. So many things can occupy our thoughts and occupy our time. It's so important. That's why Paul says in Philippians chapter four, verses eight and nine, he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. 
Those things which you've both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. It's so important that we focus on what is of God, that we remember the promises of God. Because the third reason that sometimes the voice of the Lord can be silent is that God is using his silence to get your attention. I have had that happen. I've gotten so frustrated. I remember one time in particular, I was here in New York City and I was going through a, a bout with tremendous sickness for several years. And finally, one day I was down on 8th and I was just walking down 8th and I, I finally got to the point of saying, what are you trying to tell me, God? What are you trying to speak to me? And it's at that point that I began to hear the voice of God speaking into my situation about how faithful he is, about what he was about to do again in the future, about why he was allowing certain things into my life for his reasons and for his purposes. And it's amazing when he uses silence to get our attention because we're, we're too active, we're thinking too much, we're, we're going forward a little too fast. And suddenly he just draws back. It's as if he folds his arms and says, well, I'll just wait until he or she runs out of gas until you're finally exasperated. And instead of going into the prayer closet to tell God what he should be doing, we finally go into the prayer closet and say, Lord, speak to me. What do you want to tell me? Why have you been allowing this into my life? There's got to be a purpose for it. Please, Lord, speak to me. I can't outrun this. I can't outfight this. I can't outfox this. I can't outdistance this. Lord, I thank you for your silence. Have you ever thanked him for his silence? Have you ever thanked him that he just, if you're not, have you ever had a child that won't listen to you? And you just, they just won't listen, so you just stop speaking. You know there's no point to it at this, at this moment in time, and you just let them go their way and do what they want to do, knowing it's going to lead to a dead end. And maybe at some point in the future, they might be willing to listen to you. You see, that was the case of David in 1 Samuel chapter 30. King David, the David whom all these promises that we opened with in Psalm 89 were given to. David was given the promise that there was going to be a lineage established through him that would not be taken away. That his life was going to produce a royalty. May I call it that? A royalty that would be as established as the witness of the stars in heaven. That God was going to do these things through his life. And he had a clear word. And he had a clear moments in his life when the Holy Spirit would come upon him and give him strength and wisdom that he knew was not his own. He started out strong. He started out defeating a lion and a bear and a giant. He started out leading an army, going into the enemy camp, and as the scripture says, slaying tens of thousands. It seemed like there was no end to what God was going to do through his life until the moment of silence came, until God seemingly is not speaking he, the way he used to. And at this moment in his life, he lost confidence in God. He lost confidence in God's former words to him, and he moved into walking in his own reasoning. He moved into trying to guide his own life by his own wisdom and resolve his own problems by his own strength and bring about what he thought should be by all of the natural means that were available to him, including those that were traveling with him. And all he did was bring himself and others into incredible sorrow, into a sense of loss, into, into a sense of God I have made such a mess of everything because there was a season of silence and because in that moment of silence I've failed to trust you. I forgot that you're not a man who can lie. I forgot that your original promises to me, you don't have to repeat them every day. You only have to speak once because you're a God of absolute truth. And you don't speak idly and you don't speak without a reason. What you say you're going to do is what you're going to do and nothing is going to alter that. It doesn't matter if we haven't heard that promise repeated for the last 10 years, every day, every hour, every month. It doesn't matter. 
And finally, David, the scripture says, encouraged himself in the Lord when he finally comes to an end, when he finally moves away from walking in his own reasoning and realizes all it has brought into my life is heartache and weakness. And he comes back to the source of his strength. And the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And I, I, can, only, I can only think of what has happened in my life a few times when despair knocked at the door and you go back and you remember how faithful God has been. You remember the words that he first spoke to you. You remember the promises the first time you walked through a certain door and you go back and you think about how faithful God was and you think about how you have known victories that you know in your own strength could never have happened apart from the Holy Spirit working inside of your life. And you sit down and say, God, you've not been silent to me. You've already given me your word. There is an appointed time for your word to be fulfilled. The answer is coming. Though it may seem for a season that the promises you've given me have been overpowered by circumstance, you are the God who created the universe by the word of your mouth. You are the God who calls dead men out of the grave. You are the God who calls things that are not as if they are. You are the God who will not lie. You cannot lie. You can do anything but fail. You cannot fail. And he encouraged himself and he remembered how faithful God had always been to him. And in that moment of remembrance, he turned back to prayer. And the voice of God became clear again and brought him into the victory that had always been his. You see, here's my point. Stay strong when God seems to be silent, for the victory is still yours. It's not been taken away from you. No matter what your eyes see. There's a little Sunday school song that they used to sing in church years ago. All is well, all is well, no matter what my eyes may see. No matter what my ears may hear, all is well, all is well, for God shall fight for me. All is well, all is well. The Lord sent me this morning, I believe in my heart, to tell you that all is well, all is well. You're not cut off from the life of God. No, sir, you belong to Jesus Christ. No, ma'am, you belong to Jesus Christ. His victory is still your victory. Your future is the future he has prescribed for your life. You've not lost it because of a few mistakes along the way. No, 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 that's not the way God operates. You turn to him as David did, you turn with all your heart. And now, listen to the end of the story when David writes this psalm at the dedication of his house. After all of the trial, the difficulty, the season of darkness, the confusing times, which all of us have to go through from time to time, is finally over. David writes this psalm, I will extol thee, O God, you have lifted me up and you've not made my foes to rejoice over me. Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. I agree with Brother West when he used to preach in this pulpit, he said, when Satan is cast into that bottomless pit for a thousand years, he said, I'm gonna dance a jig on the lid. I believe that with all my heart. We're gonna have our turn. Each one of us is gonna have our turn. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to thee and you've healed me. You've brought up my soul from the grave. You kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endures but a moment and in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. You hid your face and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? In other words, David is saying, there was a season in my life where you hid your face from me. It seemed that you were no longer there in the natural. I couldn't see. All I saw was destruction around me. I saw, the, I saw the foolishness of my own mistakes. I saw the folly of my own efforts. I, I saw the sorrow around me 
when you had promised that through me was going to come a reigning priesthood and victory. And it troubled me. But I cried to you, O God, and unto you I made my supplication. Hear, Lord, and have mercy on me. O Lord, be my helper. And he says in verse 11 of Psalm 30, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. You put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. God, you brought me out. You showed me how faithful you are even when I have been foolish. You remain faithful. And you put a song of praise in me because it's not about me, it's about you, oh God. How faithful you are. How great is our God. How glorious is our God. How marvelous is his victory. How complete is his cross. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You put a song within me, oh God that is not dependent on my circumstance. I don't care what my eyes see and I don't care what my ears hear. You, I put a song of faith in my heart that it will be exactly as you said it was going to be. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Even David on his deathbed says these words, oh God, even though my house is not yet everything, what you spoke to me it will be, yet I will trust you, O oh God. There was a trust in this man's heart. He was able to look beyond the natural. He was able to look beyond the struggles and trials and saw something in the spirit. God, you're building a house that's not made with human hands. You're doing it in a way that's not accomplished through human effort. You're doing something, God, as you created this world out of the words of your mouth, you're creating, oh God, something in the future for everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ by the same words that come out of your mouth. And it's not dependent upon my effort or my success or my failure. It's dependent on my heart, never losing confidence in who you are. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I will trust the Lord, David says, though the mountains shake and be carried into the sea, and though the seas overflow their borders, my heart is fixed. My eye is focused on something now that's not of this world. I don't care if everything around me shakes. It doesn't matter if what I once trusted in comes down, crashing to the ground. No, sir, my heart is fixed on the kingdom of God and the word of God that has been spoken to me. To the end, he said that my glory may sing praise. My strength may be my ability that God gives me to believe him. And my song may be focused in that faith which is alive in my heart. I will not be silent. Though God seemingly be silent to me, I will not be silent to him. I will praise him. I will glorify him. I will thank him. I'm not going to focus on all the stuff that I don't have. I'm not going to focus on all the victories that are yet to be won. I'm going to look back at how faithful God has been to me. And if you can't do anything else, just go back in your memory to where you were before Jesus called you into his kingdom. Remember how faithful God has been to you. Yes, we don't have all the knowledge. We don't understand all of the spiritual struggles that go on around us. We don't have the fulfillment yet in the natural of all the promises that God has given us. But thanks be to God, you and I have a song put within our hearts that cannot be taken away from us. We have something eternal established in us, not with men's hands, but with the very hands of God that died for us on a cross. Oh yes, oh yes, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. We are more than victors. You and I are already seated at the right hand of God in Christ Jesus. There's no mountain, there's no valley, there's no weapon of hell, there's no demonic power, there's nothing formed against us that can separate us from the love of God. No, sir, I will not be silent in the presence of God. I will not be silent among God's people. God has been faithful to me. God will be faithful to me. God will keep me. God will deliver me. God will take me home. God will take me there in victory. 
God will take my family with me. God will be God to me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory, glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Who can ever accuse God of being silent when you have 66 letters he left to you? Thousands of verses he left to you. He's already spoken, folks. He doesn't have to repeat himself. He's already spoken. The victory is ours. Glory to God. No, sir, we're not gonna leave this world a whimpering church. We're going out with a song. We're going out in victory. We're going out with the glory of God alive in our souls. Stay strong when you feel that God is silent. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. To the end that my glory will sing of you and I will not be silent. I will not be silent. I will not hang my head at the grocery store. I will not. I'm gonna lift my head because he's my glory and he's the lifter of my head. I will walk in the victory of Calvary. I will believe God that everything he's spoken to my heart will come to pass, not in my time, but in his time. But it will come to pass. I will rule and reign with Christ one day. Until that day, I am resolved that by his Holy Spirit within me, you and I shall be people that bring honor and glory to his name while we live on the earth. By allowing God to make us into people we could never be made into in our own strength, taking us places we could never go and doing things through us that in the natural never could be done. Oh God, glorify your name. Glorify your name, oh Jesus Christ, Son of God. Turn our mourning into dancing. Put off sackcloth and gird us with gladness to the end that our glory may sing praise and not be silent. Oh God, I will give thanks to you now and forever. I will praise your name now, oh God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what makes the people of God most peculiar? is we sing the victory song before those outside the kingdom can see the victory. What are they singing about? Why are they singing about a victory that we can't see with our eyes? Because we have a victory. We have a kingdom that is not established with the hands of men. We have promises that are greater than any promises could ever be made in this world. Thank God, thank God, thank God. My brother, my sister, you're not going under, you're going over. You're not going down, you're going up. Thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 joy comes again in the morning. Thank be to God, thanks be to God, thanks be to God. Father, we praise you, we bless you, God. We give you honor and glory this day. We choose, Lord, to praise you. We choose to say thank you. We choose to declare you to be faithful. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You can't be anything but faithful. That is who you are. You are faithful. Though we don't see it with our eyes, we believe it in our hearts. God, the promises you've given to us will come to pass, every last one of them, Lord. You are not a man, you cannot lie. You will be faithful to us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want to give a different altar call this morning. It's really for people who just say, I'm, I'm just coming back to what you spoke to me a long time ago. And I'm going to give you thanks. I don't care if I've been in a dark season in my life. And God, forgive me for just bowing to my natural reasoning and what I see with my natural eyes. But your promises are true. The Bible says they're yea and amen. They cannot lie. And so Lord, if I have to do that, I'm gonna come back to the first, first, first things you spoke to my heart. When I was wide open, when I was a brand new believer in Christ, and you spoke to my heart about something, I'm gonna come back and say thank you. 
That's what David did. And when he did that, suddenly heaven was opened again. And God showed him the direction to go in. And now he didn't have to figure it all out. Like he took a, a, an army of just 200 men, really, against probably thousands. But it didn't matter anymore. That's, he found his strength again. It's just moving with God. Moving with the word of God. The direction of God. After such a long season of silence. Stay strong, my brother. Stay strong, my sister. Stay strong in the promises of God. Don't let any voice or any circumstance take that from you. Stay strong. Stay strong. Prophet Daniel, the Lord said to him, in the last days, even though all kinds of difficult things are going to be happening in the world, those who know their God will be strong. And they will do exploits. In other words, God will do through them what can't be done apart from the supernatural power of God. Don't cast away your confidence in God. Declare him to be faithful, even if that's all you're going to do today. You're just going to get out of your seat. You're going to come to an altar just to say, God, you're faithful. You're faithful to me. I've been waiting. Joseph could have said, I've been waiting 13 years. <laughs> the day, I wonder what was going on the day before the king called him. Can't help but wonder, was he in that prison saying, God, it's been 13 years and it's been a journey I haven't understood. And I haven't heard your voice in 13 years, but I've determined one thing in my heart, God, you are faithful to what you promised me. And suddenly in a moment, somebody comes and says, the king needs you. Amazing, amazing the ways of God, amazing the grace of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. Every word he's ever spoken will come to pass over your life. Nothing can stop. He said, I open the door and no one can close it. No one can close the door that I open to you. Thanks be to God. We're going to stand and worship for a few moments. And as we do, if you just want to get out of your seat in the annex, North Jersey at home as well, here in the main sanctuary and say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being faithful. To everything you've ever promised me, God, I just come back to it. I don't care what circumstance has done. I don't care if I've been walking through 13 years of darkness. And it doesn't matter to me if I haven't heard your voice the way I used to years ago. I don't need to hear it again. What you promised me is the truth. And I'm going to believe you for that, oh God, in Jesus' name. The psalmist said, Lord, where are your former loving kindnesses that you spoke unto David in truth? And the Lord would say to that particular psalmist, oh, they're still here. Everything I spoke was true, but you see, you can only see the physical nation of Israel. You didn't fully understand what I was really speaking. Israel will be included in this, but it's a blessing that's going to touch the whole known world. And after this world is over, it's going to be something eternal that your eyes can't comprehend it. Your minds can't perceive it but it is real. I've spoken it and it will happen. Every promise ever given to you, God will fulfill. That is how he is glorified on the earth. It's by taking you and I into a place of confidence in him that this world knows nothing about and letting him be God, just letting him be God to us. Every word he has spoken, no matter your circumstance is true and he's going to be faithful to you. Lord Jesus Christ, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters at, at this altar, Lord. God, you've made incredible promises to everyone. Each man, each woman knows, God, what you spoke to their hearts. And Lord, you're not a God who can lie. Lord, you are going to do in your time, in your season, in your way, what you said you were going to do. And even beyond the things that we thought you were speaking about. We might, as the psalmist, think it's a certain thing you're saying, but you're speaking so far beyond our minds, we can't possibly understand it. But Lord Jesus Christ, as much as we can, we come back to you and say, thank you, God, for putting a song within us that will not be silent. A song of confidence and trust in you, Lord, even though it seems that for a season we've not heard you. Lord, you have heard us. And God, you have already spoken to us, so we rest in that in that quiet confidence, which would be our strength. Father, we thank you for it, God. Thank you, Lord, for having a people of confidence in the midst of this 
ever, ever troubled world we live in. A people of confidence and trust in God. Father, we thank you for it. We declare you to be faithful. You will be faithful. You can't be anything but faithful, Lord. That's just who you are. We declare that today and we trust in it, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.